You are woefully underprepared. Aurelian Soul is a champion with what seems like a fairly straightforward kit, but it actually contains quite a bit of complexity once you start looking at it closely. Even if you aren't looking to play him, it's still important to understand all the different mechanics in this kit so you can be ready to play with or against him, so let's go pretty deep into his mechanics so nothing catches you off guard. First up is the passive, which really defines the playstyle of the champion. Three stars rotate around Soul, which do damage and continue to pass through any target's hit. As a concept, it's extremely straightforward, but let's go into some of the underlying details. Both the base damage and AP ratio scale with level, and this really lets the skill keep up with damage throughout the game. Any CC that would prevent casting hides the star's away for the duration of the CC before coming back out. If Soul is in a brush, enemies can still see the stars popping out, so he can forget sneaking around. They still can't see him directly, but they will know for sure where he is. The stars also execute minions under 25 HP, and this check is done after they do their damage, so you get a little bit of assistance on last hitting minions, but because it specifies minions, this won't help those who can't resist taking him to the jungle. Now let's start taking the skills out of order and talk about the W, which is closely tied to the passive. W has two components. Passively, it increases the base damage of the stars, while the active increases their total damage by 50% and expands them out to a zone called the Outer Limit. Keep this term in mind because the outer limit range is used for several of the champion's mechanics. This radius is slightly smaller than his 550 attack range, but the hitbox of the stars mean he will still hit targets who are just at your auto range. It has both a casting mana cost of 40 and a per second mana cost that scales from 15 to 40 with rank. The cooldown also drops from 6 seconds to 2, making it very easy to toggle at higher ranks. Now, expanding the range means the stars have farther to go around and must move faster to complete an orbit in the same amount of time, and not only do they do that, but they actually speed up even more. Normally, the passive will make a star reach at the same spot two times in 10 seconds, however, with the W active, it will reach the same spot three times in 10 seconds, meaning not only does the damage increase by 50% when using the skill, but we increase the rate at which we can do that damage, meaning it is an even more significant DPS increase than it just seems by reading the tooltip. I should note that the hitbox on the stars is a small bit larger than you might assume, so don't be surprised if they hit things that just barely seem to not be touched. Another small note is that much like Swain Ultimate, Hourglass will not stop his stars, and if he has W active and enough mana to sustain it, they will keep moving at the outer limit with the bonus damage. Before we jump back to the queue, let's talk about the E, Comet of Legend. Again, we have a passive and active portion of the skill. If he runs in a straight line without stopping too much or turning too much, he gains bonus movement speed, increases until he hits the max. There is a buff icon which indicates when it has started to kick in and when it's reached its max. Moving also generates stacks, and at 100 he can use the active portion of the skill. Moving in a straight line and giving those movement speed bonuses causes you to hit the 100 stacks much faster. If you take champion or turret damage, he will lose all stacks and so even if you had the 100, he can no longer use the active. The active portion of the skill sends him flying in a straight line in the direction he chose, giving him full vision around him and the ability to ignore terrain and unit collision. Taking turret or champion damage will cancel the rest of the flight. His stars are pulled in for the duration of the flight. And while he can see over walls, he can be seen over walls as well, which is another way he isn't very sneaky and something to be very aware of. While flying, it sets him at a flat 600 movement speed regardless of what other bonuses or buffs he might have, so it's certainly possible once home guards are in play that using it too early could actually slow him down. You can cast items while moving, so if you are rocking that support soul, feel free to drop wards on your travels. Alright, so now we go back to Star Surge, the Q. The skill launches out a small orb that stuns targets and does damage in an AoE, as well as giving you 10% move speed while active. If he stays close to it, it gets bigger and it has some pretty unique mechanics behind it. First off, there are two ways it will explode. He can manually activate it by pressing Q again, however much like a Nivea Q, this has a small delay after casting before it can be used, so if a champion has a movement ability towards or through soul, they can dodge it before it can go off. This is going to be really key for champions like Akali Yasuo and Katarina. Alternatively, it will always explode once the core of the skill has passed the outer limit line we talked about earlier. 
He gets a helpful little line that appears when he casts the Q, so even if he doesn't have his stars expanded, he'll know exactly where his outer limit is. Keeping the skill within the outer range makes it grow in size, meaning the skill can potentially go very far, grow very large, if he is able to stay near it. The projectile travels at 600 move speed, which may sound familiar because it's the same speed as the active portion of the E, meaning they combo very well together to arrive at a fight with a very large AoE stun ready to go. This combo is helped along by the fact that you can cast Q while traveling with the active portion of the E, so he can wait to see if it's likely he is heading in the right direction to get the Q rolling, or potentially even launch the Q off in another direction while he is sailing by, but it won't go terribly far before exiting his outer limit and exploding. The cooldown on the Q starts on explosion and not on cast, so he can't ride into the fight with a giant stun and then launch another fresh one immediately after. Now E has a limited, albeit long, range and a pretty decent cooldown, so if you're like me you're probably wondering if you can stay in range without using the E active or relying on home guards. It turns out you actually can. You need a bit over 580 speed to keep up with it for most distances on the map, and the most reasonable way of getting there to me is uh, MS Quinn, Swiftness Boots with Alacrity, Third Dragon buff, Luden's Echo, and a max level, fully charged, straight moving E buff, and you get there no problem. Not particularly practical in a lot of situations, but potentially useful information because it does open some alternative paths to arrive with a big ol' stun. Finally, we get a bit of a reprieve from all this complexity with the ultimate. He breathes out a wave of damage with a tapering slow. Things to know are that it actually does the damage in a wave, and if people are close to you, they are knocked out to the outer limit we talked about so much. But that is pretty much all that goes into that one. Since it didn't really fit in any of the other sections, let me just point out that he has a transparent section of his tail, and that section isn't part of his hitbox, so skill shots will just whiz by if they hit that part of him. I guarantee you will see endless people complaining about having hit their skill shots while hitting this part of him. So that is a look at all the important mechanics I could think of for this champion. If you're looking to play him, you'll need some additional info for runes, mastery, and skill order. And so both on the video and in the description, I'll put a link to our companion post that has all of that stuff set up so you can easily reference it before games and enchant select. But that stuff aside, you should be pretty well prepped to play with or against him. I hope you guys learned something new about his kit, and I'll see you next time.